Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Make sure you like the video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. And before we get started, I have to tell you guys about my friends over at My Patriot Supply. Friends, we're fast approaching what many to believe the true second wave of COVID-19, and this may be even worse than the first. On top of that, our nation's political uncertainty and civil unrest will impact every area of your life. Are you ready? Another round of quarantines and shortages may be on the way, and those who know what's coming are using today to prepare for the worst. That's why I strongly recommend My Patriot Supply, the only source I personally use and trust for my emergency food preparedness plan, and you can too. Right now, save $100 off a full four-week supply of nutritious meals that supply 2,000 calories a day to save your life when panic or disaster hits and food disappears again from your local grocery store. Saving $100 is impossible to pass up, especially now, so go to preparewithreadeagle.com and get ready now. That's preparewithreadeagle.com. There is no time to lose. Do it now. And today we have to talk about the early voting data coming out of the state of Florida, as well as an update on North Carolina. And I'm going to show you why Donald Trump is in fairly good shape in both states in order to win them. So this was the state of Florida last time around. Donald Trump won the state by roughly 113,000 votes. He won it by 1.2% over Hillary Clinton. And this is a state that Republicans actually did well in the 2018 midterms, despite the fact that polls had the Republican candidates down by several points. Trump is right now down in the RCP average by roughly one and a half percent. That is well within the margin of error. Donald Trump also overperformed the polling in the state of Florida last cycle with several Republican internals thrown in there, and he still overperformed it. Now, this cycle, we have the early vote data out of the state of Florida. Democrats claim that they need a roughly 600 to 700,000 vote lead to have a really good chance at being able to compete in the state of Florida. Right now, they hold a 369,000 gap, and that gap is falling. It's closing in every single day as Republicans start to utilize the in-person early vote by higher numbers than Democrats previously expected. And they were almost to 500,000 in that gap. That gap has now decreased almost 130,000 since the in-person early voting started. Donald Trump did very well in the state of Florida in terms of holding rallies. He held rallies in the Pensacola area, which is coming in more for Republicans. He also held a rally in the villages, which are also coming in heavily for Republicans as well. Trump also voted himself in Palm Beach County today. So one of those 102,217 votes actually came from the president. How cool is that to look at? So very, very interesting stuff. Now, looking at the mail-in vote, Democrats are doing extremely well. Of course, that is expected. However, they're not getting the turnout they need. And the deadline to request a ballot was today, so they're not going to be able to request any more mail-in ballots if they do have to vote and they haven't voted yet. They will either have to send in the ballot they have or they will have to vote in person. So we'll see how that happens. But Democrats lead right now by 16 percentage points. There are several non-party affiliated voters. However, even by the Democrat models for the turnout based on the voter files, they're only up by three in the early vote so far with them. The Republican Voter files are showing them up by roughly one, and Republicans are gaining on them in terms of the in-person early vote. So you can look at the in-person early vote here. Republicans are doing extremely well. In fact, Miami-Dade County, Miami-Dade, which Hillary won two to one, is actually red in terms of the in-person early vote. Republicans have roughly a 1,100 vote lead in Miami-Dade County. Republicans are also up in the in-person early vote in Hillsborough County, which is where Tampa is. They're also almost up in Palm Beach, as well as Duval County. They really have narrowed the gap there. But overall, Republicans are not doing that bad. This website here says a Biden advantage within 5% or so is excellent for Trump as Democrats are pulled to split VBM 2 to 1. Roughly around 35 to 40% of Republicans plan on voting on election day compared to roughly around 10 to 15% of Democrats. So you can see that the gap right now is actually just 6.6%. That was roughly at 10 to 15% before in-person early voting started. And if that does get within 5%, it will be excellent for Donald Trump. Now, I will have to say a disclaimer, because not all of the Republican votes in the early vote are going to go directly to Donald Trump, and not all Democrat 
early votes are going to go for Joe Biden. There definitely are some legacy Democrats that will be casting ballots for Donald Trump. A lot of these people may not even know that they're still registered Democrats. And there are Republicans that will vote for Joe Biden in this election cycle. It's not really that surprising. But Republicans are trouncing expectations in Florida. They're doing extremely well. And we'll have to see if they're able to get a very good turnout on election day. That's going to be a very good thing for them in the state of Florida. So Florida will have to wait and see what happens, but the trends really are showing up to be true. Republicans doing extremely well compared to the expectations in Miami-Dade County, which Donald Trump got just under 34% of the vote. He's trying to get closer to 40%, and if he does, it's going to offset any loss he will see in the Hillsborough County. It's going to offset any loss he will see in Duval County. And keep in mind, a lot of the panhandle just opened their early voting site, so we'll have to wait and see in terms of the in-person only early voting some of these counties you only have roughly a thousand votes and that's definitely going to go up as we get closer to election day and could also impede the democrats in terms of the early vote going into election day so was cannibalizing the votes a good thing for joe biden and the democrats maybe not necessarily because they see that they are in a little bit of trouble in florida and again it's not a must win for biden it is a must win for trump but biden's must win is actually pennsylvania and I'll talk about Pennsylvania more as we get closer to the election because we still have a lot more data coming in. But uh, Biden's focusing all his energy on Pennsylvania. Then ironically, he's spitting in their face. He's calling people that disagree with him today. He called them chumps. And he's talking about phasing out oil, phasing out fracking. Not going to play out too well. And anybody who actually seriously thinks that Joe Biden has any shot at Alaska, they are really fooling themselves after the whole oil debacle because that's all that's up there. That's their entire economy. And that will be shattered absolutely overnight. So I would expect Trump to actually overperform my expectations in places like Alaska, Texas, New Mexico, Oklahoma, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, where there's a lot of oil, and possibly even parts of Colorado too, even though it's not going to be that competitive this cycle, it's going to be interesting to take a look at. So now we have to go over to the state of North Carolina, and I will talk about the early voting out of the state of North Carolina. So Donald Trump won the state of North Carolina by roughly 183,000 votes. He won it by nearly 4%. He won it by 3.6%. So North Carolina was a state that he against Hillary Clinton almost got to 50%, which automatically would lead me to believe that he's in fairly good shape in the state. Donald Trump did not do so well in places like the cities. He didn't do well in Charlotte. He didn't do well in Fayetteville. He didn't do well in Raleigh. He didn't do well in Greensboro. The only big city he really won was down here in Wilmington. However, he did run it up in a lot of exurban areas, did very well in places like Union County, did very well in places like the counties surrounding Fayetteville. He did very well in the western, more Appalachian part of the state because that is roughly where his base is, the rural white working class voter. That's really what a lot of rural North Carolina is, and it shows. So we have to look at North Carolina. The North Carolina early vote by model party, which does the best that they can on Target Smart to perfectly allocate the unaffiliated voters. Now do keep in mind, Target Smart is not a right-leaning website like so many people on the left have claimed. It's actually a Democrat operative firm that has been used to target the data to help Democrats in the past. Now in 2016, Republicans trailed in the model party vote here. They trailed by 13.1 percentage points. Now. Even with Democrats choosing to vote early and vote by mail, they now trail by 7.8. So the gap is closing in there, outperforming last cycle in North Carolina. Even by the raw vote margin so far, which is actually huge for Republicans in the state of North Carolina. Now, looking at it by registered party, it does not exactly look as good for Republicans. However, the margin is still under, percentage-wise, the 2016 margin lead for the Democrat Party. They had a 13.2% lead last time at this time. Now, they hold just a 12.7% lead. So, Democrats are in trouble in North Carolina. And again, with around 40% of Republicans voting on Election Day compared to roughly 10 to 15% of Democrats, it's not going to bode very well for the Democrats if they are not running up the early vote margins like they plan to do because they have put all their energy on mail-in ballots and they are not getting the numbers that they need. It's conflicting with the polls. Even though the polls in Florida and North Carolina are a dead heat, it's not really sitting well with Democrats so far, especially because there are a lot of legacy Democrats that do 
vote for the Republican Party. I think the model party does kind of try and allocate them properly. Democrats do have a 7.8 percentage point lead here. That is nowhere near where they need to be, and that is closing in. As in-person early voting has started in North Carolina, that gap has decreased significantly. So we're going to have to wait and see when we count the votes. But Trump is in very good shape in Florida. He is in very good shape in North Carolina. It looks like that 248 firewall is holding up just all right for Donald Trump. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Please like this video down below, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media, become a member, donate to the Patreon, or subscribe. Star links in description. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Red Eagle, out.